Okay, so this is my top five tips for self-coaching with an action camera. When me and Guy got sailing again in 2018, and initially it was only going to be for a year, so I knew I wanted to enjoy the process of learning to sail a new boat and get good quickly. And I had done a bit of self-coaching with cameras in RS200s with some success. So I thought I definitely wanted to do some videoing and analysis in the RS800. And that's kind of how this YouTube channel um, started. So what I'm gonna do is give you my top five tips for coaching yourself using an action camera. Um, so hopefully you can see some of the improvement as well. First of all, the key thing is to know what information you can get from an action camera and what information you can't. So if you've got the horizon in the shot, you can really easy to see the amount of heel. Um, you can also see your weight distribution in the boat where you're positioning yourselves. Um, you can see it side to side. If you've got a bit of elevation on the camera, you can also see fore and aft where you are in the boat. You can also see a little bit about sail settings. If you put the cameras in the right place, you can have a look at your leech profiles, how tight your slot is. The other thing you can pick up, not so much from the video, but from the audio, is you can actually pick up quite a lot about the communication using the boat. So bear these things in mind, these are the aspects of sailing which are really easy to self-coach on. There's some aspects of sailing which are harder to do and you can't really know about with a camera, but these are areas where you can see some, um, see some big gains. Tip number two, um, really think about where you're putting your camera on the boat before you go sailing. And you want to coordinate this with whatever aims you've got for that day. Generally speaking, if you put the camera closer in, you can see more detail, but you won't see the bigger picture. If you put cameras further away, then you can see the big picture, but you won't see the detail. So have a think about that and try and think about where you can put your camera on your boat so that you can pick up some of that really important information um, that we mentioned in point one. Tip number three. Um, expensive action cameras have better stabilization and a nicer image. But for a sailor who's coaching themselves, I think you're better spending your money on cheaper cameras, but more of them. Um, this process isn't about creating the Gucciest looking videos. It's about collecting information about your sailing. And the more cameras you have, the more different things you can monitor at once. You know, you can have one looking up at your leech profile, you can have one looking at your movement about the boat, one looking forward, one looking backwards, and that allows you to catch a, a more full picture of what's going on in that boat by, um, by seeing things from another vantage point. Tip number four, prepare your cameras before going afloat. Um, first of all, make sure they're charged. Second of all, format the SD cards and clear them so you've got plenty of storage. Um, you'll also want to put a little bit of fairy liquid on the lens, polish it off, that stops the water from beading up. And the other thing you can do is see cameras in a case is close the case in an air conditioned environment, maybe the car when you arrive at the sailing club. And what that does is keeps moisture out from the camera so that the lens doesn't fog up. Um, so there's nothing more frustrating than going out from the sail, having a great session, being like, oh, I can't wait to get, to get back, see what we did on that jibe, see what happened on that tack, how our sail settings were. And then you open up the footage and all you've got is horrible fogged up lens or water on the lens and it's completely unusable. Tip number five, and this is about the camera settings. So a key thing in action cameras, especially on the more expensive ones, is the stabilization. Stabilization, digital stabilization, 
works by cropping the image a little bit to take out the shake. Now, a stabilised image is very nice. Sometimes it's better to see what's going on in a nice smooth image. However, it does cut down on the field of view. A field of view is really important on a boat. You want as wide a field of view as possible so you can see the action at either extreme of the shot. This is especially true on trapeze boats where the crew is often a long way off the center line and you want to see all the way out to the action that's happening over there. So um, what you can do, stabilization is probably more important when you've got the camera mounted further away on the end of a long stick. It's going to be shaky and you're going to need that stabilization. But if you mount your camera closer to the action, if you mount it on a really stable part of the boat, like the bottom of the mast, the mast foot looking back, that's a really stable point, so you won't need the stabilisation. And you can turn it off and that opens up the field of view on the camera so you can see more of what's happening at the extreme. So there's my top five tips for using an action camera for self-coaching. I want to speak a little bit about um, the mounts I use and a little bit about why I like them and the type of information I get from them. The boom mount, it's basically an old tiller extension stuck to the boom. This one for the 200 has little moulds so it kind of velcros around the boom. The one for the 800 is this longer stick, it goes inside the boom and levers in. But again you've got this much sticking out the back of the boom it's looking down into the boat. Um, the information this gives you, it's really easy to see trim because you can see the horizon, so you can see how much heel you've got. You can see um, where people are, you know, where the weight is in the boat in terms of how far out you are either side, whether the crew is moving in unison. Probably my favorite mount. The downside to it is anytime you put a stick, a camera on the end of a long stick, uh, on a boom which is moving around, you're gonna get shakier footage. And that's where um, a bit of camera stabilization and a more expensive camera may help you get a bit more useful footage. One trick for the boom mount is to counterweight the camera. This uh, gets rid of a lot of that twisting shake. The camera is perfectly uh, balanced either side of the stick at the end of the boom. Mast mount okay this is probably one of the most basic ones um, i've got this little velcro strap goes around the mast camera goes on there and it's on the foot of the mast or well about head height looking backwards into the boat this gives you a really good view of the cockpit um, especially downwind when the crew are moving move backwards in the boat you can really see the detail of what's happening in terms of the movement the um, the hand, the grabbing sheets, what you're doing, when. Oh, one of the other good things about this is it's a really stable place to put a camera. So if you've got a cheap camera, which doesn't have good stabilization, then mounting on the mast will give you a nice locked in position. Um, the downside to it is upwind when you're hiking out or trapezing out, often you'll be beside the camera. So you won't be able to see the crew at that kind of extreme. But turning off the stabilization might help you get your uh, crew back in the footage. Uh, okay, next is mast head mount. Um, I got this one, got another video on how to make this. Really cheap, bit of poly pipe, GoPro mount, couple of little twizzly clamps. Um, this gives you a really good view down into the cockpit, shows you where the weight is distributed fore and aft and side to side. The mount is offset from the mast. Um, what this does is lets you see a little bit down the leech of your main cell, so you can really see the twist you've got on your main and get some good information about that. Um, the downside to a mast head mount is you can't see the horizon, so it's really hard to tell how much heel you've got on, and I think that's probably one of the key things. After all, a flat boat is a fast boat. Um, you are also quite a long, lot further away from the crew and the action, what's happening on. So um, it can be a little bit harder to see the details of what's going on there. Okay, next mount is the uh, head cam mount. One of these little things. Um, generally, 
for actually coaching yourself, this is probably one of the least valuable um, camera mountings. Um, you can't actually see much of what you're doing personally or what the crew's doing. Um, it does give you some awesome footage, like it looks amazing, the head, you know, point of view um, footage, flying down waves, looks really good, um, but doesn't actually really give you much information for self-coaching. The one thing it is good for though, isn't the video, but the audio. So if you have a camera mounted up here, yeah, you, you can hear enjoy. what you're saying. And actually in a two person or three person okay, boat, that's really interesting in terms of uh, communication and teamwork. It's actually quite interesting. I, you know, I go out on the water and I feel like I've communicated effectively. I've said the right thing at the right time and it's been clear. And then I watch back and or listen back to some of the um, head, head cam footage and I realise just how vague and just how confusing some of the stuff I say to poor guy is. Um, and listening back to some of our conversations is pretty hilarious where neither of us know what the other one's talking about. So um, yeah, not the greatest um, kind of perspective for seeing what's going on, but it's a great position for hearing what's going on. Yeah, I hope this has been useful for you. Um, I definitely think we're living in exciting times for sailing and if like me you just like improving and the process of learning then getting a few cheap little action cameras can um, help you do that dinghy sailing um, it's so invaluable one of the most one of the best training tools uh, you can currently get certainly for an amateur sailor so um, yeah I um, really rate these little things and um, yeah, hopefully um, they can help you improve your sailing too.